Hey, y'all, welcome to our next episode of Adventures with Aggie brought to you by Coco's Coffee House. Today, we're featuring professional boxer Otto Wallen, originally from Sweden, but coming to us from New York City. Please welcome Otto. Well, Otto, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm excited to share your story and get to know you a little bit better. But um, first, let's just kind of start. Can you give me some background on who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm a Swedish uh, professional boxer. I'm a heavyweight. Uh, grew up in Sweden in a town called Sundsvall. It's a smaller town with 100,000 people. And uh, I have two older brothers. Um, then uh, I turned to boxing when I was 15. And I had uh, a bunch of amateur fights. And then when I was 22, I uh, became professional. And at first I went to Germany and then Denmark. And I was in Denmark for about four years. And then my trainer over there, he's from New York. And uh, when he moved, he wanted to move back here. So when he moved back in 2017, I followed him. So now I've been here for almost four years. Oh, me too. I've been here for four years. That's crazy. Uh, nice. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, I guess uh, kind of backtracking a little bit. Why boxing? Like when you're 15, how did this become your thing? I think that my, my father uh, was a boxer and he was a trainer. And my brother, one of my brothers also had some amateur fights and stuff. So I think boxing was al always part of us a little bit. Like we would do a little bit of training at home and stuff just for fun. And sometimes uh, they just wanted me to do it, <laughs> especially my brother. I rather I, I was rather wanted to go and like play with my friends, but he would force me sometimes to work out with him. Uh, but yeah, so I did ice hockey and, and soccer and stuff before. And then when I started boxing uh, at 15, I just felt that it was for me for some reason. It was just everything felt so good and there was great, great, uh, great community at the boxing club. Everybody was so friendly and open. And uh, I also felt that I was pretty good at it. And uh, that's something I never felt when I was doing foot, uh, soccer and ice hockey. So, um, yeah, I really fell in love with boxing right away. It only took me like a week to know that, man, this is what I want to do. And, and uh, yeah. That's awesome. I think that's so fun when, like, you have the passion, like, you like it and you're good at it. Like, I like so many things. Like, I like soccer, but I'm so bad at it. Like, I, there's no way I could play soccer. <laughs> but that helps a lot, right? Like, with your success and things, like, having that passion behind it, I think, helps a lot. Definitely. I think that's very important. I mean, there's, there's you got to put in so much work to be good at something. And if you don't enjoy it, I mean, it's going to be very hard. So, for me, it's been great. I know boxing is what I love. And, you know, uh, there is a ton of work that I put in. And... Uh, and but I mean, some it's, it's not always fun, but but it is what I want to do. And it, it is my dream. So so it's always worth it for me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It comes with bumps. Everything comes with bumps in the road. But um, yeah, that's awesome. And you're still doing it many years later, which is great. So you do love it and it's working out really well. Um, but I kind of wanted to move into these training sessions that you were mentioning earlier with your brother, and I guess they've probably evolved since then. But um, can you just kind of walk us through like a typical training session? I don't know that my listeners are super familiar with the sport. Um, yeah, can you just kind of tell us what you do when you go to the gym? Yeah, I mean, when, when, when I was younger, we would just play around at home and, and stuff. But then when, when, uh, when I went to the gym, uh, they would, they would uh, take me aside because I was new. And a trainer would teach me the basics and stuff, and we would work on that. And uh, then uh, I think my first work, I would did some some physical stuff at the end, and I was so tired. Even though I had played the other sports, I was so tired. So when we were stretching, I almost I almost fainted because uh, it was just different. Like we were using the whole body, and it was just different. And but now nowadays, a normal workout is. Uh, you know, get to the gym, and I, I usually bike there. It takes me about 20 minutes uh, to the gym from where I live. And I meet up with my trainer and uh, maybe do some skip rope, 10 minutes, and then uh, we do some shadow boxing when you, like, punch in the air to get warmed up. And, uh, yeah, then my, my trainer, he holds pads for me that I'm hitting, and we're working on technique and stuff and, and tactical stuff with, with him, and then 
do that for a, for a few rounds and then go on the heavy bag and and do that and then uh this all uh then there's some other bags like a double end bag and stuff for more timing and stuff and also the speed bag that you see in the movies do that sometimes also yeah so that's uh pretty much a normal workout a boxing workout then i do my strength and conditioning also and that takes a lot of work and that's you know uh weight training and cardio and uh, yeah it's a whole bunch of training yeah i feel like boxing is one of those things that people think it's like all arms because that's what you see most of the time right yeah. like you see the punches when you think about boxing you think arms but even like myself i started like teaching myself how to box like just for workout purposes in my apartment during the pandemic you know i was bored why not try it <laughs> and i was exhausted like the first few it's one of those things you do have to kind of build the endurance i think to do it a lot or regularly and yep. i was not ready for that <laughs> <laughs> but here we are now yeah i mean yeah it is very different because with boxing you're using the whole body yep. and you know the arms the legs and everything and then there's so much to think about also with with the technique and stuff and that you know it's, it's tough especially in the beginning definitely like i'm exhausted just like my, by myself i couldn't imagine boxing like against someone <laughs> you know what i mean yeah <laughs> couldn't do that <laughs> yeah so you know there's a lot to think about and also yeah. the punch is coming at you <laughs> yes yeah that's yeah. it's a lot it's a lot more than people yeah. think i think um yeah. but i guess let's also talk about the mental part of the sport i know i've seen like on the news all the time like is boxing mental like you have to have this mental toughness to be a boxer um i yeah. guess how much of it is the mental and physical and how do you keep that balance I think a lot is mental, very much. And uh, it, I mean, it's hard to put a number on it, but it's very mental. Uh, you know, if you, there's a lot of emotions that when you go into a fight, you know, you're scared, nervous and everything. And then you can be, you can be the best of all when you're at training and in the gym, but then it's different when, it, when you come to a fight. So you got to be able to handle those emotions and perform when it's really needed. And uh, for me, uh, I try to take pride in my training. And I know when I step into the ring that I've done everything I can. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I've done, I'm doing my best. And, uh, you know, if it's not enough, then it's not enough. And if I win, that's great. It is great. It is great. Yeah. Um, I guess the kind of a follow up to that is like, do you, how do you train your mind? Like, I know it's like a huge part, but do, are you doing like, mental exercises and things i know like the past year right everybody's talking about mental health mental fitness and things um yeah. how do you how do you work on that a, a big thing for me is that i've been i've been using a sports psychologist uh since 2012 and uh that's a he's a great man he, he lives in my hometown and uh, we get along great and he's taught me so much over the years and not just with boxing but outside of boxing too and uh like i said there's a lot of emotions that, that goes through your body and your mind before a fight. So he's really helped me to, to know how to think. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is that pretty much just embrace it all. You can't, you can't block the thoughts out or the feelings out. If, I mean, if you're nervous, you can't just say, oh, man, man, and now I can't be nervous because then you got to get more nervous. So, so I'm trying to embrace it. And I know being nervous is also a good thing because you, you're getting ready and you, your body is sharp, your mind is sharp and uh you'll be ready to fight definitely i think the the words the my favorite words that you just used were embrace it like you yeah. can't just ignore it no matter i don't think that's a thing just for all sports too like not just in boxing but i think boxing is more mental than some other sports are but um yeah embrace it like if you hide it or if you keep it in you know that's only going to build on top of itself like what you said um yeah definitely i think i think not just in sport but probably yeah. in life also sure definitely definitely yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see. Okay. Last kind of question on your training and things. I know people always talk about boxing diets and this is something very unique to boxing. I think um, yeah. just as far as like weight upkeep and weight classes and things like that. So can you just kind of tell me, I, you don't have to tell me like your diet, like, I don't want to know what you're eating every single day, but um, I guess what kind of role does this play in your sport? I, I think, I mean, diet is very important. Also there's this, you know, without the right diet, you can't perform. Yeah. But for me, for me, it's kind of simple. I just eat normal food, uh, nothing special at all. I'm a heavyweight, so so that means I never have to lose weight. It's just uh, 
everybody above 200 pounds fight in the heavyweight division. So you know, just trying to weigh over that and uh, make sure I get the right fuel so I can perform my training. And uh, so it's not very complicated for me. Maybe sure. a normal meal will be pasta, chicken, and some veggies. That sounds good. That sounds really yeah. good. Your people who are cutting and stuff, it's like celery all day. And that's so stressful. But um, yeah, I know that's great. 200 plus <clears throat> eat easy. Yeah. To eat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome. Um, cool. Let's go to some of the questions that people have submitted for you. Um, so the first one is, how would you describe yourself as a boxer? I would describe myself uh, as a smart boxer and uh, a serious guy. I take my, my training and boxing serious. So I always trying to get better. And uh, I feel like I'm pretty fast to be a heavyweight. I got good movements, uh, good footwork and, and good defense and um, good offense also. I, think, I feel like I'm pretty all around and I got a great team and a great trainer that always prepares me for everything. So... I would say that I'm uh, a pretty smart boxer with, with good techniques and good tools. I totally agree. I agree with you. <laughs> well-rounded <laughs> is really good too. I do think very well-rounded. Um, awesome. Let's see. Next one that was submitted. Um, who is your favorite boxer? I guess somebody that you looked up to kind of as your inspiration or role model. From early on, it was a lot about Muhammad Ali for me. He, My father was big on him and uh, I... I watched uh, pretty much everything I could find with him, documentaries and fights. And yeah, he, he's been a big inspiration for me. And uh, then also I like Mike Tyson. Uh, but the biggest one for me was, was Muhammad Ali. And uh, he was a great boxer, but also a great person. And, and uh, he did a lot in the ring, but maybe even more outside of the ring. And that's very impressive. And I think that's important. He always stood up for himself and for his beliefs. And uh, I think that's important for everybody. You know, we got to stay up, stand up for ourselves and our beliefs, and we don't have to be scared. Definitely. Totally agree. We've seen more of that in the last 12 months than we ever have before, which is yeah. incredible to watch. It's really awesome. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. But, but it's kind of sad that it has to be this way. And I mean, it, sh it shouldn't even have to be this way now, 2021. You know, it should be better than this. But, but yeah. hopefully it's moving in the right direction. Yeah, I hope so. The awareness can only help, I think, just as far as talking yeah. about these issues and stuff. But yeah. hopefully we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Um, awesome. Let's see. Next one for you. Got to throw in a COVID question. So how has COVID impacted the boxing world and maybe your training? I know gyms were kind of shut down for a while. Um, so how did you deal with that? Yeah, For myself, it affected me that the gyms were closed. So I pretty much had to build a gym in my apartment. <laughs> and uh, so I, I bought a stationary bike. I borrowed some weights and uh, I bought some bands and stuff. And then uh, I, I was lucky enough to find a bench press and a squat rack that a friend had. So he brought that over. So, yeah, my, my apartment was pretty much a gym. And uh, so I was working out there and then, you know, everything started to open up. So that helped, of course. But boxing was down for a while. There was no fights going on for, for a few months. Uh, then I was lucky enough to get a fight in August last year. And that was uh, one of the first shows that was going on. And uh, so I was lucky to get that. But no crowd, of course, uh, which was very different. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I've been lucky. I had that fight in August and now I had this fight in, in February. So so I've been, I've been one of the lucky ones, I think. Definitely, definitely. I know people have been sitting on their couches for months. You got some in, so that's really exciting. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the training the training is not that fun always, so it's nice to have fights also. Yes, definitely. Yeah. No, I also have done that. I've got, like, yoga mats and, like, weights and resistance bands and just stuff thrown all over the apartment right now. Nice. <laughs> but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I think yeah. the, the fun part, I guess, of having watching people work out from home and like their videos or on like Instagram lives and things like that. It's like, I see people like doing squats with like microwaves over their head or like toasters <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, good fail fails also. It's yes. been going on. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I know there's, it, it's dangerous. I think <laughs> like, it can, it can be dangerous. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I did one thing. I had a, I had a dumbbell on my chest. And I was doing a sit up. 
Yeah. And when I went back, it like rolled over my face. Oh, God. so I lost a bit, a uh, piece of my tooth here. But I, I, at first, I thought that I had lost everything. But I, oh. I rushed to the bathroom and saw that it wasn't that bad. So I was lucky there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. 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 Very lucky. Very lucky. They all could have been gone. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Well, yes, I think people are trying to do whatever they can do. And that has resulted in some crazy stuff just like that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Next one that was submitted. Can you um, kind of compare the boxing culture in Sweden? I know you spent some time in Germany with that in the U.S. Because I know like I have on, like my Brooklyn boxing hoodie. Like I think it's very much a cultural thing here. Um, but can you just kind of talk about what you've seen in all these different countries that you've been in? Yeah. Boxing in Sweden is not huge. It's, it's a smaller sport. Uh, boxing, professional boxing was forbidden for almost 40 years. Now it's allowed. Uh, so I think that hurt boxing in many ways. And, and so it's not, it's not that big over there. Uh, it's bigger in Denmark and Germany, where I was before. Uh, so, so that's good. I think, I think boxing in Sweden is growing, though. I think that we only need somebody really good that can stand out, you know, and be popular and trying to you know get more give boxing more attention and and um yeah hopefully i can be that guy uh working on that but another thing that i that i've noticed is actually sparring i feel like sparring over in sweden where i was from we, we never went that hard with each other it was always pretty controlled and light but then some in denmark it was harder but over here especially is, is I feel like sparring is always like a fight almost and uh, very tough, but that can be good. I mean, that is good, of course, especially for me that's a professional, but sometimes I think it could be good not to go that hard either. You know, if uh, you, know, you don't have to, to hurt anybody and, and stuff. So that's a little cultural difference. Sure, yeah. I think if the purpose is different for each spar, right? I feel like technique or something maybe the goal isn't to hurt somebody that day <laughs> I yeah. think yeah that's that's true I've seen you can tell in boxing movies too like boxing movies are like all the hype all the time I feel like because they're so they're great stories and stuff but you do see that kind of like really aggressive aggressiveness in the gyms yeah. and stuff and like that's when I'm like okay not for me <laughs> yeah no but but that's also I mean movies is always different of course yeah. but like, like I said, when I first started boxing, I wasn't sure how it was, was going to be down there at the gym. But when I went there, I was so happy that people were so open and friendly. And I was, you know, I didn't expect that, but I really made good friends there to this day. And then uh, all, the, all the boxing gyms I've been in in my life has always been very friendly and open. So yeah. I think that people that want to try boxing, they shouldn't be scared of it and just go. I, I feel like there's a lot of respect in a boxing gym. Everybody knows that, you know. You can't be great at, at first. You have to work for it. And, and I feel like everybody's supportive. Definitely. You read my mind. My next question for you was, what would you say to somebody who is looking to start boxing, but maybe they don't want to go step into the gym or they don't know how to get started? Yeah, I would say look up a gym that's maybe close to you. Or if you know a trainer, maybe you see a trainer on Instagram or whatever, yeah. you know, talk to them and, um, and, Try it out. Don't be scared because not everybody in a box in a boxing gym is a pro, and uh, you know there's a lot of beginners there also. So, so don't be afraid. And everybody has their own journey. And uh, yeah, give it a shot. Definitely, there'll be people like me there, and there'll be people like you there. Big difference. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm the beginner. You're the pro. <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> awesome. Uh, just a few more for you. Uh, next question, I guess, what is, what's next for you? What are you focusing on? What are you working on right now? Yeah, so I just had a fight in February, February 20th, that I, I beat a guy named Dominic Brazil, which is a pretty good name. So uh, I'm looking to fight maybe this summer, July, I think. Um, so working on that. We don't have any opponent yet, but I'm working towards that. And um yeah, like I said, Brazil was a pretty good name, so it's probably going to be another step up from him and uh, another big name. And uh, if I beat him and hopefully I move on and and uh, I'll be ready to fight for a world title soon. 
Definitely. I'm rooting for you. Adventures with Aggie listeners are rooting for you. I'm so excited. I actually saw Brazil fight Deontay um, when last time it was in Brooklyn. I don't know what year that yeah. was. I don't that know. That was probably three years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a tough fight for him. It was pretty quick. It was. It was. That was crazy. I feel like I sat there and watched the the undercard for hours and hours and then the fight was there and gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. It was a good night, fun night though. Any night in Brooklyn with boxing is fun, I would say. But right. awesome. Um, I'm pumped. Can't wait to see what's next for you. Um, the last question, because this is called Adventures with Aggie, I ask an adventures question, right? So where is your first adventure or what kind of adventure are you looking to do um, post pandemic? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What are you looking forward to? Oh, good question. <laughs> uh... I mean, I haven't been home in Sweden in uh, a year and a half now because of the pandemic. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen my family and my friends. So that'd be nice. That would be an adventure. Uh, other than that, I feel like I've been in South Africa once. I would like to go back there. I, I was in Johannesburg. I would like to go back there. Maybe Cape Town. Everybody talks how nice that is. So I, I think I would like to go and see that. Me too. That sounds great. That sounds great. Sweden or South Africa? Either one yeah. sounds lovely. <laughs> awesome. As long as it's in the summer in Sweden, yeah. it's not cold. Yeah, I hear people going skiing in Sweden. There's all kinds of things to do there, but um, yeah. I wouldn't know. Being from Alabama, we don't really have that, so <laughs> okay, <laughs> a little different. But, um, but, I, but I heard it was snow in Alabama not too long ago. Yes, it did. That was crazy. I think it snowed in Alabama before it snowed in New York for the first time this year. Wow. Which is, Bit really not normal <laughs> yeah but it is what it is i know we're just getting over the snow here in new york that's been chaos for the last month yeah. but it is what it is it's melting the black snow is still here not great but anyway i'll let you go get to your haircut but thank you so much for your time Otto. this was great and thank you for sharing your story thank you very much for having me and and uh, look forward to being on again sometime Otto, thank you so much for sharing your story. Please tune in on Monday to hear our first episode of Adventures with Aggie covering the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We're going to dive into the NWBA for two weeks. So get ready and get excited for the NWBA. Mm-hmm.